Let's face facts. When you hear the name Sonic the Hedgehog lately, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? I'm guessing it's not exactly something good. The icon of the Sega franchise has had major problems lately, and has become somewhat of a joke within the gaming community to a certain extent. It doesn't help with things like this. We haven't seen a good Sonic game since for most people would have been Sonic Generations, and yet there's still this one of Sonic. Sure, many fans of his past have turned off to him and what he's become, but there are still those who would love to relive the days of Sonic's past. And I'm talking about some of his truly high points. Even those who have a fond memory of games like Sonic Adventure 2 will remember that those games had just as many flaws as strengths. And yet, the guys over at Sonic Team and Sega haven't been able to create a good Sonic game in a while, which is surprising, because others have. And what I'm specifically talking about is the group of devs over at Galaxy Trail that made the indie hit Freedom Planet. To say it's taken inspiration from Sonic 3 and the days of the Genesis would be, well, pretty much exactly right on. But it poses the question, why can this group of developers make what is essentially the best Sonic game in years, and the guys over at Sonic Team can't? Well, that's what I'm essentially going to attempt to answer. Even with the world of 3D Sonic now, there are still things that Sonic Team should take note of from Freedom Planet to understand where exactly they've gone wrong and why they can learn a thing or two about game design from the smaller team. The first idea is simple and has been the biggest problem with Sonic in my opinion since the Genesis era. You see, I alluded to earlier that even games like Sonic Adventure 2 had major problems. The first big problem with the latest Sonic games is that they don't focus on one gameplay mechanic and an attempt to diversify too much in the gaming audience. Now look, variety in games is a good thing, but it's using the right type of variety that's essential to the core experience. Sonic Boom was the prime example of this. In an attempt to appeal to more markets and different people, they jammed the game with several different mechanics that frankly crashed right into each other. You'd go from a section that you'd be racing down a path at speed, right into a slow and repetitive combat section. Then you'll be dumped into an overworld with optional missions and places to explore, to have to dealing with puzzle platforming. And that was true even with the character mechanics they added. Four different characters and elements meant four different ways to play with that character, and usually multiple paths in a level, whether it be crossing a crystal hanging bridge with Knuckles, or using Tails flight ability to move from platform to platform. And what did that cause? Well, simple. Everything was watered down, each mechanic barely held together, and was so limited on return that it ended up being a bland experience altogether. Not one section didn't suffer because of it, because not enough time and effort was put into one mechanic to make it stand out, or one level to make it stand out. You see, when something shines, it stands out from the rest, and Sonic Adventure 2 is the prime example of this and why Sonic fans look back on it with such nostalgia. Let me ask you something. How many Sonic fans remember the opening level of Sonic Adventure 2? Racing down the streets of, well, not San Francisco. Almost everyone who played the game did, because that level was polished and hilariously fun. Everything about the level design, everything about the running and mechanics of that stage worked, even the slower and more straightforward sections. Now, how many people remember the Tails and Dr. Eggman sections with fondness? I'm going to take a guess and say, well, none of you. At least in the case of Sonic Adventure 2, it had its star. In Sonic Boom, it did not. And let's then understand why Freedom Planet worked so well. The gameplay mechanic was simple. Get to the next section of the level by running from left to right, taking enemies out along the way and getting to the boss. Beat the boss and end the level. That was it. Even though there were puzzles or mini-bosses along the way, the gameplay stayed the same in the basic running and combat. And with that done, it meant that more focus was put on that section to refine it, to make it its own, to let it shine with the player. And guess what? It worked. They knew to focus on that gameplay. They knew that you get yourself noticed in the modern day gaming world by polishing a feature until it sparkles. Because everyone loves things that sparkle. And remember, what sparkles more than anything else is polished gameplay and something that stands out among the rest. Secondly, I'll let a quote set the mood for this topic. You're too slow. Sonic is always supposed to be about speed, but that's the funny thing about Sonic. 
Sometimes speed has been his greatest downfall. Moments in which the game is fast. Too fast, in fact. Where a player can't react in time to what's going on, and ends up hitting a hazard or not having enough time to deal with the situation in question. You see, there's a mistake there in the core of understanding what makes Sonic good. It's not that he's fast. It's the perception that he's fast. To make the gameplay feel and act like he's speeding through the level, even when you sit back and look at it, he's not faster than anything that you'd see in other games of the genre when it comes down to it. Speedrunning an old Mario game isn't really anything different when it comes down to it to a Sonic the Hedgehog on the Genesis. You see, at the core, you want Sonic to feel fast on what he's doing, limited only by your case of indecisiveness or planning out the situation. And that's something that's been failing in the Sonic series lately. Part of it is harking back to the first point. When you change gameplay mechanics, it slows the action down some to get used to that different mechanic. There's a natural slowdown there, of course, but that's only the tip of the iceberg, because slow sections can be incorporated into the gameplay still, and that's actually where I think the bigger issue lies here. Sometimes having a section in which Sonic has to slowly move through the segment and level can actually help when it's woven into the faster sections. It helps to provide a contrast on the speed and how fast you're going. Once again, I use the first level of Sonic Adventure 2 as an example. These platforming sections here aren't necessarily slow at their core, but a good player can get through them reasonably fast, in fact. But it's still slower than running down the hill, and yet following it up with another running section makes you feel like you're picking up speed again and going as fast as Sonic can. Again, the same applies for Freedom Planet here. There are puzzle sections that make you change direction or work yourself through segments more systematically, for example. But once you get through them, you can pick up speed again. And the evolution of gameplay here is exactly what Freedom Plan does to take the Sonic gameplay to the next level, by turning Sonic Spin Dash into a Spin Air Dash. The ability to throw Philia across the screen with a push of a button changes a lot. It adds a lot to the speed for not only beginning players, but really comes into play for experienced players who memorize the layout of the levels. Players who use this skill wisely can get back into the gameplay quickly if they are halted in their advancement. Now, in Sonic Generations, there was something innovative there too, the dash meter. It allowed Sonic to get back up to speed rather quickly, or to use it in times to get a little bit of an extra boost when it was needed. That element went missing in the next iterations of Sonic, which didn't help to keep the action up and didn't keep the idea of speed there. In addition, Philia in Freedom Planet has an ability to float with her Cyclone ability. Now that seems to work against the speed mechanism as I indicated before. But remember, it's the perception of speed. And while it brings you a little slower, what it does is keep up the momentum. And that's the perception of speed again. If you really use it wisely, you can keep moving along the screen without stopping, which is great for speed runs and really getting into things. Again, the perception of speed. It's also the fact that too much speed can lead to a lack of control, and sometimes holding back is exactly what needs to be done. Again, Sonic Boom was a good example of this. Speeding along was great, until you hit the first barrier. You then realize that the amount of speed that you did have seemed to be too much, that you couldn't naturally react to the situation in question, and you ended up taking damage. But don't think this wasn't a problem in the old games either. It just was taken care of in a completely different way. And that way was shown by Freedom Planet. Now, most of those levels would have you drop to another section if you missed the jump into water, for example. The true death traps would always be a lot easier to avoid, however, because it'd give you a lot of time to react to them where they were, or they were released in areas that you could more easily maneuver in. The level designs were a lot stronger here. They encouraged the speed without being reckless. But later Sonic games have forgotten that. They've gone for death traps. They've gone for running off the level. Now, the infamous Sonic 06 was a prime example of this, but this was even evident in Sonic Generations. You can actually attribute a lot of Sonic's modern problems to level design. Again, you want to complement the core gameplay that you're going for, for the Twitch platforming, for the perception of speed, which allows a masters of the game to take advantage of enemy placement and platform placement to get that extra boost of speed to get through the level. And yet, I want to be clear on something. Taking advantage of the speed is definitely important, but not overdoing it is also important. Part of the main problems with a lot of the poor designs with Sonic levels is simple. They're too long. I'm talking a lot about the running sections. Again, think back to games like Sonic Adventure 2 and Sonic Generations. While you have definite speed sections, 
they'd be followed up with traditional platforming sections almost right away. And yet, think about games like Sonic Boom, and how at times it took a while to get through those running sections, how the loops felt like they went on forever. You see, you want the player to feel like they're blowing through the level, and the longer those running sections are, the worse that's going to be. Once again, Freedom Planet understood this and evolved it. Its level design and its combination of abilities is cleverly well done, because in fact, you can also combine the two while still allowing for the traditional platforming. It knew at times to slow the action down, with things like the dandelions or forcing you to backtrack at a specific part of the level. And what's great here is simple. If you know about those elements beforehand, you could still blow through them and keep up the speed. But it didn't feel incorrect per se to slow down for these sections, unlike on those giant ramps that I'm talking about with modern Sonics. The level design is fascinating in many ways in Freedom Planet due to allowing for multiple characters with different abilities, but on the pure Sonic level of things, it understood what it needed to do fantastically. You know, I'll probably be doing another Freedom Planet video in the future because there's a lot to take from Freedom Planet in understanding what it does for the platforming genre. But the thing is, Sonic really needs to look at Freedom Planet to understand where it's gone wrong over the last several years. It had a gem in Sonic Generations. It had a gem in Sonic Adventure 2, despite the problems that it had. They all have their strengths. But right now, there are no strengths for Sonic. The fact of the matter is, he's sort of a joke. And if they want to keep him in the future, it may need to look at a dragon, a cat, and a bunny to figure out exactly what they need to do going forward. Also, I still don't know how that's a dragon. I really don't. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you like this content and want to see more of it, you may want to hit that subscribe button on the left hand side. If you like this video and want to see more of this content, take a look at this video on the left hand side as well. And if you missed my last video, take a look at the right hand side. Once again, thanks for watching and keep on gaming.